More and more companies are going woke. Well, one company is doing something. Michael Seifert. He's the founder and CEO of Public Square. I certainly believe that this is a turning point in corporate America. The United States is heading into a new renaissance era with a lot of companies that are fighting the good fight. I've been really excited to find businesses that align with my worldview so that I can shop in alignment with my values. If you're going to try to mess with us, we've got the resources to make sure that we're impenetrable. I'm excited. This is about time the microphone of society gets passed back toward me to people. How's it going? Glad to hear it. Good to see all of you. There's an old adage that conservatives are the best looking people, and I agree. Uh, you look wonderful up here. We're joyful, we're resilient, we're excited about the future, we're hopeful for a better nation, one that I'm proud to pass on to my daughter and her future kids. That's why I'm joyful. It's why I have a smile on my face. Sometimes we can come to things like this and we can leave overwhelmed by the problem without a ton of solutions. But one thing I love about Charlie and the incredible people at Turning Point is they always give you practical solutions so that you don't leave just frustrated, you leave inspired and hopeful for a better future with practical steps you can actually take to get there. So when Charlie called and he said, hey, I'd love for you to talk about how we can win the economic war because I believe we can win the economic war that we're currently facing. I was elated. I was glad to come and speak about solutions. So I have a lot of good news for you today. Can I share some good news? Yes, I love it. You guys know what Goya is? Goya Foods? Yeah, run by a great patriot. So Robert Unanwe is the CEO of a company called Goya. They're the largest provider of Latin American food in the United States. And I was with Robert two weeks ago in New York City and I said, Robert, how's it been? You are on the front lines of the parallel economy. You have focused on quality in your presentation of your business and your products and your services, and yet you have not had to sacrifice your convictions and sell your soul to achieve the uh, success you've achieved. How have you done it? And he said, well, I've just held fast to my convictions and I've always believed that ultimately I serve an audience of one. I am about my father's business. I believe in God and I believe he's called me to this and that's why I put forth quality and excellence in what I build and thankfully it's paid off. He talked about how in 2020, in the 2020 elections, the media pushed him on who he was voting for and he said, well, I'm voting for Trump, sue me. And AOC, you guys know AOC, uh, Democratic Congresswoman from New York City, she said, I am a proud Latinx or Latina or whatever they're called. I am a proud Latina woman and I believe that as a Latina woman, we should boycott Goya. Okay? So he says, Robert says, I'm voting for Trump. AOC says, let's get his head. We are absolutely boycotting this company and the power of Latina resistance come with me. Here's what actually happened. It was the most successful month of business Goya Foods had ever had. And the most hilarious part of all this, he actually gave AOC Employee of the Month and hung her picture on the wall. And he said, any time you would like to initiate a boycott, please be my guest. This is wonderful. Here's why I start off by telling that story. We are winning. We are winning. Sometimes a small faction within our country that's very loud, they love to yell and they have a lot of opinions about things they know very little about. They come out with their bull horns and the blue hair and they get so angry trying to convince you in the process that you're alone, that you're the crazy one. When in reality, if you love your country and you love your constitution and you believe in the classic American principles that built this great nation, you believe in objective reality, you are not in the minority. Millions and millions of Americans stand with you. And any time we see something happen in economics, like the flood of support to Goya, or like the boycott of Bud Light or the boycott of Disney, any time we see things like the success of Sound of Freedom on a tenth of the budget of Disney, We are reminded that you are not alone. You're not alone. MSNBC wrote an article about us two weeks ago. You know what their headline was? The weird, wacky, alt-right company trying to create a parallel economy. 
They thought that would be some sort of dig. Here's the thing. If MSNBC thinks you're normal, you're doing it wrong. If you fit MSNBC's definition of normal, I would encourage you to evaluate your life choices. It is an absolute privilege and honor to be called weird and wacky by a group of people that want decimation to our country and the moral fabric that has built this great nation. I am proud to be weird in their eyes. If what they deem is strange is strange, then so be it. We absolutely are wild and enthusiastic about creating a parallel, patriotic, America first economy where truth is at the forefront of every transaction. So we started a company called Public Square because we were inspired to win the economic war. We believe ultimately that the media has also fed you another lie. You can only vote every two and four years. That's it. That's the power limit the cap of your uh, ability in the United States to express your opinion about how society should be structured. You have the ability to cast a ballot every two and four years. That's what they tell you. Here's the reality. Every time you swipe your card, every time you make a purchase, you are empowering something. This past summer, we learned that millions of Americans were tired of empowering Bud Light, Target, Anheuser-Busch, Disney, all these different companies, to the tune, by the way, of a $50 billion decrease in market capitalization. So, we are winning. We have a lot more power in our wallets than we realize. And today I want to share with you three ways in which I believe we can win the economic war. Not just for this generation, not just for a momentary glimpse in our nation's history, but actually for generations to come. First, it looks like you have to recognize you're in a war. There was an old saying that the last person to recognize they're in a knife fight loses. The first person to recognize it already has an upper hand. You're at an economic war. I did not start this war. We are on the forefront of creating an economy that actually works for the American people, but we did not start this battle. People say, and MSNBC criticized us in this article, they said, you guys are stirring division in our country. We said, excuse me, we didn't start this. I was comfortable with neutrality. In fact, I say all the time, I'm not even an inherently political person. I'm driven by principles, but I'm like a normal dude from 2006. It's just... The country left me behind. And so as we look at the economic environment, we have to recognize that neutrality is dead. They have caused us to pick a side. Do you want to be on the side of globalist authoritarians that want to use their oligarchic structures to steal your human liberty? Or do you want to be on the side of objective truth, beautiful morality, the valuing of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for every American? I do not know about you, but I go with the latter. So step one is you have to recognize you're in an economic war. The other side has realized it. Mark Benioff, you guys know who Mark Benioff is? He's the CEO of Salesforce, one of the largest companies in the world in software. Did you know that Mark Benioff, not only did he buy Time Magazine so that he could have a, a media apparatus to serve his regime, he also called himself the most anti-conservative CEO in the country. He takes pleasure in canceling you, funded lawsuits against the former president. Jeff Bezos created Amazon, took your data in the process, used it to weaponize his forces against you, hired 19 lobbyists for the FTC so that they could keep their bureaucratic regime going, bought the Washington Post so that he could have his own media apparatus entity that would pre protect, protect his image. Nike will gladly lecture you about climate change while they are lobbying the United States government to continue the use of slave labor while they claim they're the virtuous ones. And by the way, our message is not ditch Nike and go with Adidas. They're both bad. But did you know there are thousands of small businesses around this country that are owned independently by families that would love to serve you and they would never lecture you about climate change when they are just trying to serve you products? So number one, recognize the economic war you're in. Proverbs 3.9, I'm a man of faith. The Lord is the light of my life. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I never shy away from any opportunity to share that. I love liberty because I know the author. That's why I do what I do. Proverbs 3.9 says, honor God with your wealth. It is impossible to honor God with my wealth if I'm funding communist authoritarians that act more like weaponized political organizations than they do functioning businesses. I can't honor God with my wealth if I am funding anti-God companies. That's number one, recognize the war you're in, okay? Number two, recognize the power that you wield. 
I open this by talking about this. You wield incredible power with your wallet. Anytime you spend your money on something, it is what you were empowering. So if you're a builder of solutions, which I hope that you are, conservatives should be the most creative people on the planet, driven to solve problems. It's in our nature. Last year we learned, I'll give you an example, that every single major diaper brand, this will seem random, but I'll connect it. Every single major diaper brand in the United States today, just to show you how far wokeism has gone, vocally or financially supports abortion. Did you know that? How does that make any economic sense, let alone the moral egregious nature of it? Every single major diaper brand in the United States today, Hello Bello, Coterie, Pampers, Honest, all of them either vocally or financially support abortion. Coterie, which calls itself the luxury Rolls Royce of diapers, quite a name, they came out last year after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and you know what they said? They said our team is heartbroken to learn this devastating news of our abortion access being revoked. Hello Bello actually funds their employees' abortions. My wife and I last year, we were learning from our Public Square platform, we've had millions of searches in our search bar, we were learning that the mama bears on our platform were looking for diapers, and unfortunately there was not a pro-life, pro-family, and pro-freedom option. My wife and I were also, at the same time, October of last year, having our first little kiddo. Her name is Lily, she's amazing. She's a miracle from God, she means everything to me, and we thought, well, gosh, we're not going to put her in pro-abortion diapers, that makes no sense. By the way, to show you the economic insanity of this, this would be like me saying, you know what, I've got a great idea, going on Shark Tank. I'm going to pitch a men's shoe line where a portion of our profits will go to the extermination of men. <laughs> the logic is the same. And so we thought, this makes no sense. There's not a pro-life, pro-family, beautiful, elegant diaper brand. You know what? We're going to create one. We were driven by solutions. So now, proud to tell you that in four months of being live, we've created every life. And in four months, it is already the fastest growing baby brand in modern American history. And we have a simple message. No matter where you're from, no matter where you look like, no matter your socioeconomic status, the color of your skin, your background, every life is a miracle. It's deserving of protection and celebration. And far be it from me to be someone that would ever advocate against the most vulnerable and their right to life. That's the message of our brand. And we give back to pregnancy centers, adoption facilities. When Maui hit and the fires happened, we actually donated over 150,000 diapers to Maui with the power of our consumers. It's been amazing. And best of all, the diapers work. We have a one-year-old. She's an every life baby. It's wonderful. What's my point? Be solution-oriented. If step one is recognizing the moment that we're in in our nation's history and the economic war we're facing, number two is recognize the power you wield as a consumer or a business owner to create change. Corporate America will listen to you. ESG funds have been decimated the last six months because the power of consumer spending has made it very clear to the tyrants on Wall Street and in Washington, D.C., we do not want what you are selling. It is working. You wield power in your wallets. So step three, what do you do with it? Well, you use it day in and day out. Sometimes we hear folks reach out and they say, hey, I'm, I'm just concerned. You know, I still have an iPhone. I have a hard time leaving all these woke companies behind. What's the point? Our encouragement to folks is just start somewhere. You never know the power that you wield until you actually start wielding it. You never recognize the change you can have with your wallet to vote, not just every two and four years, but every single day until you start to wield it. Y'all, we have story after story after story. We have over 75,000 businesses on Public Square, well over a million and a half consumer members. We hear testimonies every day of business owners reaching out and saying, my business has been saved. We had a hair salon that reached out and said we were going to have to go out of business. COVID took it out of us. The government wouldn't let us open. We actually faced fines from the government. And yet, with the power of Public Square and the consumer base that we've garnered through this parallel economy, we're actually back on our feet having the strongest season of business we've ever had. We've had employees match with employers that don't hate them. We've had folks move their banks to banks that they know they can feel a blessed assurance that they're not going to cancel them. We have had entire towns transformed by what's happening in Public Square. And the beauty is, y'all, we're just getting started. 
in less than 18 months, this platform already hit a million members faster than Twitter, Airbnb, Spotify. The movement of the parallel economy is growing. Power structures of society are being shifted back toward we the people, and all it takes is starting with a shift of your spending for one item. Pick an item. I bought this watch from Public Square. I bought my socks from Public Square. I got a coffee from a Public Square business. You start somewhere, and you will find over time that more and more of your purchases are weapons in this economic war that will shift the power structures of our country back to the values of we the people. You get to be on the forefront. You get to make change. You have a wallet. It's time to wield it. Sound good? Let's go. Love it. Hey, friends, it's fantastic to talk to you. You can learn more about what we're doing at Public Square at publicsquare.com. We're changing the country with the power of consumer spending, and we would love for you to join us on the journey. Have a great rest of your Monday. Thank you so much.